Currently 8.08. My next guest is in the studio. She found her way. It is shocking. Her name is Carolyn Brown, and uh, she's a science and medicine writer and an editor with 18 years' experience at Canada's two largest scientific publishers, Canadian Medical Association Publications and NRC Research Press. She's written everything from speeches for cabinet ministers to feature magazine articles, mainly for Ottawa Magazine. She is a contributing news writer for the Canadian Medical Association Journal. She's also a trainer, helping authors and editors to write and edit scientific papers to explain science to the public and prepare references and other material. She joins me in the studio. Good morning, Carolyn. Hi, Tick. It's this, wonderful to be here. It's so weird. I eh? remember when I used to tech your show. Yes, um, I do. And, and you did several shows. I'm not, were you part of the Off the Pedestal crew at one point? I, no, I didn't do Off the Pedestal. I did uh, a lot of uh, programs here on CKCU uh, back in the early 80s, uh, starting on uh, Artistic License, actually. Ah, that's... I was on Artistic License for many years. Uh, started uh, just as one of the contributors uh, when uh, Suzanne King and Sandy Burrs were producing it. And uh, eventually became producer myself, and then passed over the reins to Jonathan Browns at a certain point. Ah, uh, right. And he's yeah. still in the city of Ottawa doing art stuff at the Art Bank, I think. Uh, no, he moved on from the Art oh. Bank several years ago, and he's now in charge of public art for the city of Ottawa. Oh, cool. He's the man on the spot for all that art you see around Ottawa. I hope to see him on Saturday. Are you coming to our 40th birthday on I Saturday? I sure am. Oh, I, I It kind of snuck up on me. I had to check my calendar and say, can I make it? But I will be here at the 40th anniversary party. Mm-hmm. Well, we're all volunteers, so we don't have... Have, you know, everything as cranked up or as good as we'd like it to be. But yeah. it's going to be a wonderful night. There's going to be lots of alumni. Uh, I know Craig Mackey is going to be coming, and there's a lot of uh, Al Thaw and a lot of people you know. Uh, yes. A lot of people I know. And uh, um, it's a scaled back version, so there'll be plenty of time to just sit and talk and uh, reminisce with people. Did you do other shows as well? Yeah. Um, I also did uh, I did a science show, got a science show started that was eventually taken on by other people. That was Let X Equal X. The, it became Let X Equal X. I oh. think when I started it, it was called Quantum Leap, which was Pat Nagel's idea. Oh, okay. And, uh, and I did, um, it was intended to be a short-lived show on ideas and ideology called uh, Cognitive Dissonance. Ah, that's it. Yeah, that yeah. was a lot of fun. I, I have some of that. You know, I could actually bring up a Cognitive Dissonance show, I think. But really? But keep talking, <laughs> yeah. Because I, I had some... Uh, do Tick I have has it? everything. His photo collection is unbelievable. Well, it's, it's unparalleled. It's, it was pretty funny, eh? uh, um, that thread with, uh, with you, and it's, it hasn't stopped. It's still going on. And there's another thread that I made the mistake. I said, you know, uh, say a name and the picture will appear. And oh. now people are saying these names and it's like, oh, i got a lot of work to do when I get home. <laughs> <clears throat> Tick is posting a lot of old photos of CKCU on Facebook and uh, brings back a lot of memories, and we all looked a lot more fresh-faced back in the day. Look at this. You want to hear Cognitive Dissonance from the 6th of November, 1985? How's that sure. for instantaneous? Let's, let's just play it. Just for, let's just listen to what it sounds like in the beginning. Oh, wait. That's the intro. So, yeah. Let me see if I can, uh, let's skip Take it up it. somewhere? Yeah, let's see, because I taped the whole cassette. Oh, I see. Give us a call and pledge your support. Remember oh, that name? Oh, it was name? a funding drive. Five, yeah. six, four, seven, five, nine, zero. Remember this one? So, yeah, it must be somewhere. Somewhere else on that Somewhere disc, else in yeah. there. But, yeah, I've got uh, Cognitive Dissonance um, and uh, other shows here, No Wasted Words and yeah. uh, Andreas, if you remember Andreas, Artistic License from 84, mm-hmm. a few of them. Um, yeah, I, 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 th- I thought it was just your show because it had a cool intro. Uh, it did. Uh, John Stamos picked that. It was. It's. It started with some uh, some kind of uh, Wizard of Oz deep reverb kind of voice, and then it went into the tackiest, chintziest music we could find. Da, 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 I'm going to try to cue that da, maybe da, da, da. maybe during a break. <laughs> we'll figure. It. And let X will equal X. Uh, Peter McDonald uh, took that over mm-hmm. at some point. And I remember teching that show for, for years. It moved around a bit, but mm-hmm. I think it settled on a Monday at 7 ish or a Tuesday or something. I don't know. Uh, how did you first come to CKCU? Do you remember your yeah, what I do. got you here? Um, not exactly, but I, I remember some of the early days here. I, you know, I was in the journalism program at Carleton, and I'd always liked radio. I had actually done a little radio before stepping into CKCU. Um, I had worked on a radio reading service for blind and print handicapped people. 
uh, in uh, the town I came from, which was Oakville. And at that, uh, it was a very early community radio station, and it basically broadcast newspapers and books and magazines um, all day long. So I had had a, a, just a little bit of experience in kind of a one-room one studio kind of uh, setting. And so uh, I liked it. And when somebody said that there was a radio station at Carleton and that it was Canada's first uh, over-the-air FM uh, campus radio station, uh, I thought I'd give that a try. So I showed up, and they were recruiting volunteers in kind of a constant way. Um, and there were several shows to work on. I was interested in the arts, so I, I signed up. And that it was that easy, really. I, I found some other pictures of you, by the way, too. Um, we did a funding drive kickoff with Flying Saucers on Spark Street. Yes. And I found one just late last night of you in a little, like, hunter or safari hat. It's all white, a white jumpsuit, yeah. uh, glasses and funny gloves on. Um, <laughs> yeah, the alien leaving funding drive. Uh, do you... Um, was there any one particular moment or something that stands out for you from from your time here at CKCU? Like no, so many a great interview or or so many. <laughs> there were there were there were really so many. Um, uh, one time uh, I didn't do the interview, but I remember when uh, the British socialist Ralph Miliband. Uh, was here and came and did a, a long, like an hour long uh, feature interview here. That was a highlight. Um, I remember when Nina Hagen was oh. here and she was sitting right over there and I was standing right here. Uh, and uh, and uh, she, somebody, the interviewer, asked her uh, how she got over the Berlin Wall, a question she never answers, and she coyly made up some ridiculous story about going to the astral plane with her super friends and waking up on the other side of the wall. <laughs> yeah, she was crazy then. I think she's still a bit crazy. I don't, I don't know. But, yeah, I, I remember when she, uh, she did a concert down, I think it was Porter Hall or at mm -hmm. least at Barrymore's. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, and you're still in touch, it seems, with uh, other alumni. Oh, yeah. Um, the one guy, we won't get into the details, but I'll, I'll, I knew him as Jean-Marc Charon, but apparently he had a whole bunch of John variants, and he did a show here with another John called John Stamos, and it was called The Two Johnnies. Yes. It was one of the most incredible shows. They got <laughs> away with murder on that show, <laughs> and it was damn funny, and they did streeters, which mm -hmm. we don't do anymore, and yeah. I I'd like to try to do that again. Streeters are when you go talk to people on the street and mm -hmm. ask them stupid questions. and um, but yeah, uh, his real name, which I never knew, is John Cody, uh, well, uh, and a Jean musician. Jean-Marc Charon is his real name. Oh, really? Yeah, John Cody is a stage name. Oh, see, uh, I'm so, uh, I, well, I never knew. Yeah, yeah. and uh, a lot of us who started at CKCU went on to a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. There, Not only is there a life in parallel with CKCU and after CKCU, but CKCU really helps people get their start uh, regardless of what they do with the rest of their careers, mm -hmm. right? And um, actually, Johnny and I were recently talking about uh, about uh, our CKCU days, and he said, you know, it was like Paris in the 20s and the Algonquin Round Table in New York all wrapped into one. And I said, okay, well, that might be exaggerating slightly, <laughs> but well, not too much. It was, it was a very stimulating, exciting place to be. And um, so Johnny, uh, uh, who doesn't usually go by his original name simply because it doesn't speak French, um, it gets confusing. Uh, he uh, is a musician, and he went on to... Uh, to play, sing, and uh, write a song for Tom Cochran on uh, Life is a Highway. That's Remember so that cool. album? Yeah, yeah. And uh, he's worked with a lot of other people. He was down in the United States for many years. He was working with Larry Klein, uh, Joni Mitchell's ex-husband. Um, so he had the wonderful opportunity of meeting his, uh, his idol, Joni Mitchell, and uh, worked with a lot of great people in uh, Los Angeles for many years. And now he's back in Canada this mm. year. Uh, he's moved back to Canada for a variety of reasons and uh, just did some recording last week in Toronto. 
And but again, you're you're in close contact with mm-hmm. them. And I read this post where other names are familiar with John Marshall mm-hmm. was helping him out driving around. That's a bit. right. And it's like John Marshall, he's like the executive, or he's the field producer for Rick Mercer. That's, That's right. why we have Rick Mercer ads here at CKCU because we asked Johnny, hey, get Rick Mercer to say something for us. Yeah, John Marshall, another great CKCU alumnus. Yeah, this. and there was an I think there was one other name there or a couple of names, but it was amazing because I thought he just this. Jean-Marc Charon guy just disappeared and then I found out he's a musician. He's got a CD somewhere. I don't even know if we have it here at the station. He has several albums. Really? So, yeah, he's uh, he's done quite well. Mm-hmm. So, uh, it's amazing what people go on to do. Uh, and uh, for myself, I would say um, you know, my career, as you, you just gave me a very nice introduction, um, my career went in unexpected places, as many careers do, you know, but uh, it really owed a lot to the things I learned at CKCU and the people I met. Mm-hmm. And a lot of those people are lifelong friends, like Jonathan Browns. Uh, I'm still in touch with Henry Sporn uh, yep. in Vancouver. Um, and uh, and who else? Uh, come, Kevin Crombie, who mm-hmm. uh, has worked all over the country and is uh, currently back in Ottawa uh, and has a senior position in communications at the Department of Fisheries and Oceans currently. So neat. Um, mm-hmm. So... So you left CKCU. Well, you didn't leave. I guess you got a job. I got a you job. you actually left, right? Like, <laughs> well, when, you did both at the same time? Well, because when I graduated, it was 1983. And the recession in 1983, I really feel for the young people today mm-hmm. because the recession is is tough and it's long and it's very hard for young people to get a job. Um, now, I graduated into a short, sharp recession in 1983. Getting a job was almost impossible. All my friends were out of work. Nobody had a job in their career. Uh, but fortunately, the economy cover- recovered quite quickly. But while I was kind of waiting out the recession, I actually put this on my CV <laughs> tick, that it, when I was ra- waiting out the 1983-85 recession, I was uh, working here on the executive. I was producer of Special Blend for a little while and then director of public affairs. Uh, but then, yes, I had to get a real job because they didn't pay very well. It was well. like $5,000 <laughs> a year. <laughs> it's like less than minimum wage. I could live on nothing. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yes, I did have to move on, and I did get a real job. Uh, and it started just as a writing editing job for a small company. And uh, and today I work for myself, and I'm kind of back doing similar kinds of work that I did uh, back in the 80s. Yeah. Which is a similar path that Henry took, too, mm-hmm. because right. uh, he, he went into editing editing and writing. He did a magazine for a while. Then he got into this world of coding, which I know you know a bit about. Yeah. It doesn't really apply to Canada as no. much as it does to the States. Yeah, but medical insurance oh uh, codes. My, his, my brain would explode <laughs> talking to <laughs> Henry about <laughs> coding because he'd know the code for a syringe or for this drug or for a swab or a Q-tip. And they'd have to know this because so, in America you get this giant bill after a, a night in a hospital yeah. where they charge you for like clean sheets and stuff. It's like spooky. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Know. So Henry worked in that for a while, and now he's uh, he's writing up um, what people, uh, what medical researchers do for um, their scientific research and development uh, tax credit.